All right, folks, Josh Reeves here with you. This is Friday, April 22nd, 2016. And uh, wanted to do a show for, here for you and address some things I've been getting a lot of emails and questions about. And that is, of course, the uh, the death of Prince. I've been getting a lot of emails, people saying, you know, what do you know, what do you know? And, um... So there's there's questions there, so I'll address some of that here for you guys. And uh, give you the general updates as far as what's going on with my work in the film, The Spoke Aspers, which I'm uh, still nose to the grindstone, working my butt off to complete here very soon. But, uh, you know, I was getting all these emails about this Prince thing, so I thought I'd, get, I'd take a break and uh, talk about some of that stuff. Everybody's got a lot of questions. Off the, uh, you know, off the charts. I'll tell you the truth, I, I, I hadn't really looked into it at all, but sometimes I don't even have to look into these things. I just, I notice things and, and they give me clues and whatnot. But, um, yeah, people have been asking, you know, is what's up with this? Is, you know, is this some kind of ritual thing again? Does this connect to the David Bowie thing? So, yeah, there there are some interesting things. There, de there definitely is. Um, but if you go back and listen to the shows that I did around the time when I, um, a few months back, when I did the film, the uh, Secret Messages films, part one and two, we've got the standard definition versions of those on, on YouTube. If you want to see the full HD versions, you can get those for, I think it's like eight bucks for the combined both films together in one one complete film in my download shop and my website. But what I, uh, you know, people had, had, had a lot of questions. Cause back during that time, I had said on the, here on the show that you'd see more of these type of deaths this year. And boy, there's been a ton of them and there's a, a, a very, disproportionate amount of these and i mean tons of musicians really this year not just ones that are you know super mega famous and you've heard about like david bowie and and uh prince i mean there's just been tons of smaller and lesser known musicians and stuff it's, it's really uh getting to be on the eerie and creepy side but um the Prince thing is very, yeah, it's 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 definitely very inter interesting. So I'll I'll do my best to tell you what I know based on the available information and based on things that I've seen. People have asked me, you know, was this some kind of a ritual? You know, did they murder him? Because of course, a lot of people automatically go to the he was murdered by somebody thing, and um, they're. There seems to be some evidence that, you know, that may not be out of the complete realm of possibility. I mean, um, if you look at deaths of other celebrities like, uh, you know, Whitney Houston and then her daughter and Michael Jackson. I mean, these guys, you know, they have these doctors that come to them, these like, you know, and a lot of these guys are, I mean, they're just, all doctors really are just pushers for the drug cartels, really, for the, for big pharma and the rest of it. So these guys, you know, will take private clients, you know, big name clients, musicians and whatnot, and do house calls and write them scripts for whatever they want for as much, as much as they want. You know, as long as they get paid the big cash, something that's it's gone on for an extremely long time. It's something that's uh, also is beyond just uh, stuff that doctors are giving prescriptions for. I mean, in in Hollywood, some some I've uncovered in the music industry, uh, you know, there's been insiders big names who've been connected to 
being drug suppliers, essentially, in the movie industry and music industry for, for years. Former past stars, current stars, I'm not going to give them away right now. And I'll be talking about this in, in the next edition of the Spellcaster film, Volume 2. But, uh, yeah, it's not out of their own possibility that somebody could have paid somebody to, you know, give him bad prescriptions, bad drugs, stuff that was tainted with stuff. I mean, it's, you know, that's not po- that that's possible. It, it is possible. Do Does, does the evidence 100% support that? I, I, I don't believe it does right now. We'll have to wait and see what happens. But in my opinion, based on what I've seen and what I've looked at pertaining to this to Prince and his death is there's definitely the elements and the connections to um, blood sacrifice rituals and, and that whole thing. And then that gets into the, you know, some of the territory that other people on the internet and whatnot have said, you know, a lot of people said David Bowie faked his death. I don't believe that supports that, but a lot of people believe it. Um, I didn't, that's why I didn't get into that. In my movie, because it, it wasn't, it wasn't relevant to the rest of the information, in my opinion. But, uh, and people already say, I've already said that about Prince and whatnot, but I, I'll tell you what I, I see and what I think is different about this Prince thing than any other ones is, this, to me, looks like this was a self-sacrifice. Not that he... And not to say that he committed suicide or intentionally, but, you know, a a few months ago here on the show, I told you, and I think this was a good good couple of weeks, maybe a month, I can't remember how long it was, but I told there was a story going around about a, a... Oh, you know, a famous person in Hollywood that had HIV, and I, I, I predicted it was Charlie Sheen, and I was correct about that. And recently, some of these same sources that reported on that that were correct about that discussed the story going around uh, that Prince himself uh, was either HIV positive or uh, had full-blown AIDS. It's not really for sure which one. And that he had contracted AIDS back in, sometime in the 1990s. Prince's sexual exploits, of course, male or female or vegetable, animal, mineral or vegetable, really, uh, are well documented. And supposedly, he met, Two years ago, with some of um, religious higher ups from the Jehovah's Witness Watchtower Society, which he was a member of, but unlike uh, Michael Jackson, who was also Watchtower Society, uh, which is, of course the Jehovah's Witnesses, Michael Jackson, his family was that way. He was born into it, whatnot. Prince converted, I think, sometime in the early two thousands. After him and his girlfriend at the time had a baby that died shortly afterwards. Now, what's interesting is that she died recently too. And uh, of course, the reports have come out that he OD'd on Saturday night, and this, that, and the other, and. All this, you know, these weird, conflicting reports. Some reports saying it was flu, and and this, that, and the other. But supposedly he um, he had been taking, you know, I guess the, the the cocktail of drugs that Magic Johnson has been taking, presumably since the early nineteen nineties. It's kept him alive, and I, I, presumably Prince was on those same medications. That two years ago, when he met with these religious figures he made the decision after talking to them that he should go off his medication that was basically keeping him alive and just let you know the natural course of events happen instead of staving off the you know 
And uh, so supposedly two years ago, he stopped taking these anti-HIV, um, anti-AIDS drugs that were keeping him alive. And um, he had a, 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 I think a hurt, I don't remember what it was. He injured his back or his hip. I think it was his hip. And so he essentially, uh, you know, because you're, when you're, when you're on that stuff, you know, the bones get brittle, you get gaunt, you get, uh, you know, stuff like the flu, like they said, he had very easy because the immune system is decimated, not by the actual uh, disease itself, mind you, that's what, that's what they want you to believe, but actually by the drugs themselves that they give you, and, and since Prince had, uh, you know, was widely known to have discussed stuff being put in our food and water and stuff and discuss chemtrails. It stands to reason that he, you know, he figured out that, hey, wait a minute, these, you know, these drugs, because that's exactly what happened to Freddie Mercury. That's exactly what they did to him. And I suspect for uh, probably the same reasons as, as, uh, you know, as Prince, that in a lot of cases, look at you know, look at the career. Look at look at where Queen's career was going. I mean, it was you know they had a big uh, rise to megastardom in the in the seventies and then into the early part of the eighties. Put out a, a disco, funk, dance inspired record called Hot Space that was a complete antithesis of their guitar-heavy rock and sounded more like the soundtrack to a gay nightclub in the early 80s. And uh, so their career never really recovered after that. Uh, Then, you know, Freddie gets AIDS, HIV, they put him on these medications, which, of course, um, I've talked about before, are made by the same companies who create the the poppers and the things that uh, gay men do or would do that, uh, you know, the amyl nitrate poppers, you know, the, the same company that makes, that makes those that actually put in the markers, they leave a DNA signature that people have attached the definition to of being the HIV virus. It's actually something that's caused from this, uh, but in the, the chemical that's in these poppers that does this. And then you go to the doctor, doctor sees that, then he tells you you have HIV, and then you have to get in all these medications, and those are actually what uh, decimate your immune system and slowly kill you. So Prince probably became aware of this fact, talked with his um, people in the, Jeho- you know, the Jehovah's Witness, and uh, you know decided he just wanted to let the thing affect him naturally and take him out naturally instead of by these chemicals and these drugs. Um, but the interesting thing is who who where does where does all his money and his fortune go to five hundred million dollars? Uh, as far as I know right now, from what I saw and what I checked, nobody really knows at this time whether he had a will or not. If he doesn't have a will, it goes to his supposed ex crackhead sister. But we're talking about big money, or is it going to go to the Watchtower Society? Now, the reason why that. This is what's interesting. This is this is where it starts to get into the into sort of the deeper stuff here. I mean, the Watchtower Society, uh, aka the Jehovah's Witness, was created by a man, of course, by the name of Charles Taze Russell. Go go, go Google Charles Taze Russell headstone, and he's buried in this gigantic fucking. Uh, pyramid with the all-seeing eye on top of it. And the Watchtower Society, the, if you look into the Russell bloodline and look into things like the, like the Russell Trust, do some research into that, and the Russell bloodline, and that's, of course, the bloodline Charles Taze Russell came from. They trace back to the Levite tribe. He is a direct bloodline descendant of the Levite tribe, one of the 12 tribes of Israel. And uh, the Levites 
were sort of like the early, as I've talked about many times on the show, the priest class. These guys were sort of the early sort of religious, mystical hierarchy. We're talking about pre-Freemasonry. This is long before the advent of Freemasonry. And uh, what's fascinating is, is that these uh, Levites, Levite priests, the white priests, the Levite priests, from the Levite priesthood, would they had a uh, initiation that was identical to the initiation of the Pythagorean mystery schools and the, what they called the mystery religions, the Egyptian mystery schools, and later the Freemasons. So these guys, the Levites, were the precursor to that. And so that's where the connection to the Watchtower Society, this is why you have Charles Taze Russell in the giant pyramid with the all-seeing eye. It connects back to that mystical order, and, and again, they're, uh, you know, the Levi tribe's rituals were exactly what would later be modeled and taken in 100% by the Freemasons. So you see that connection there with Freemasonry and uh, and this idea of this being some sort of ritualized death. I think it's possible that um, he maybe sort of chose to die or wanted to die around this date. I mean, it's it's a very interesting date around that, in that target time area of about a month or so. There's always a large amount of Killings and deaths and ritual and stuff that looks ritualistic in nature, uh, because they they like to do these events like nine eleven and different ones on these certain dates where these windows, sort of windows into the, into the spirit realms are, are are perfect and open to offer up the, the the souls and the dead to these entities that the elite worship. So the fact that um, Prince died on uh, April 21st, 421. Of course, the day before being 420, the worldwide effect, official uh, smoke-out day. But other than that, I mean, people forget what else happened on that day, you know? You had uh, Columbine. Columbine happened on, and that was, you know, a total stage managed operation. Massacre, ritual sacrifice. That happened on 420. The Boston Marathon bombings, April 15th. Five days away from that. Oklahoma City bombing, April 19th. Hitler's birthday in there. I mean, you see, this this is uh, it's just a little too. Again, when you, there's just there's no such thing as this many coincidences, and in this day and age, where especially the music industry, where the music industry has been in turmoil for quite some time, it's you know all these stars to think about. When was the last time Prince had a had a, a, a you know hit song? It's been a long, long time. Yes, he's continue to record, and supposedly, you know, we, we all know about the legendary vault. But that's big money just sitting in there that uh, these record labels could be capitalizing on. And, and uh, if he didn't want to put it out there, well, now he's dead. He has no choice. Uh, 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 a, a, I've said it again, in this day and age with record sales not like they are and the music industry being the way it is, a dead rock star is sometimes worth more than an alive rock star in some cases. And absolutely, if you think decisions won't, aren't made like that, you think that record labels and these big corporations, they see the artists as nothing more than ones and zeros. They are just... And if, if they aren't you know, if it's more, if it's worth more to them for that person to be dead, they yeah, they set up stuff where, of course, they 
have spiritual advisors come in that supposedly, you know, probably posed as people from his church and advised him and steered him towards the end that they wanted. But it's interesting that, you know, he joined the Watchtower Society after the death of his child with his girlfriend that died a short time ago as well, I think from similar related illness. And so a lot of people speculated that she was going to be the one that would have gotten his fortune and stuff. Well, she's dead now too, so who does it revert to? But his, you know, his Paisley Park, he's got a house, studio thing, his big place. I mean, go look at that place. It's got pyramids all over it. I mean, he, he clearly is showing his uh, allegiance to that. And, you know, people were asking me about, you know, is there a connection to the David Bowie thing? Does it connect to that in any way? Well, again, we, you know, we talked about a lot of the Freemasonic elements, and I talked about that in the uh, Secret Messages films. And that's, you know, that's what I look for in, in this situation. Those are the little calling cards they leave. Now, here's the interesting thing. I, at first, didn't really see any connection to the, to the David Bowie thing at all. Um, and then I heard that he played his, what now, he didn't know what no one knew at the time, would be his very last show last week, and he played it in Atlanta. Now, Atlanta, the city of Atlanta, is called Atlanta because it comes from Atlantis, because right where Atlanta is, that area in there is where part of Atlantis was that sank. That's why the Georgia Guidestones are out that direction, not far from there. And uh, Atlanta's a very significant city for events and different things they do as a calling card back to those you know, the, the Levite priesthood. You know, the white priests, which, you know, go all the way back to Atlantis. And, of course, with the Freemasons as well. And Fre Freemasons always have Atlantean iconography within their uh, Masonic temples and the rest of it. And, lo and behold, at this show in Atlanta, what would be his final show, Prince performed live at that show a cover of David Bowie's song, Heroes, which I put the 8-bit version of at the end of the first Lost Secrets part. I looked to see if, there, if um, this is something that he'd done before, or something he was known for doing. It absolutely wasn't. It absolutely was not something he regularly, he didn't regularly do David Bowie covers, but for some reason on that night, on what would have been his last show, of all the songs and people he could have ever covered on that night, at what was his last show? It was David Bowie. So, um, again, you look at the connections, you look at the iconography, you look at the symbology, dates, times, there's all these stories, like, uh, false stories going around, you know, Aretha Franklin, uh, maybe he got the Zika virus. I mean, all this disinformation and speculation, all this stuff is being done on purpose. They're muddying the waters so that all sorts of rumors and whatnot go about his death so that the real truth of it, if you ever heard it, would sound preposterous to you in light of their official narrative that they give us on his death. So it's going to be interesting to watch how this plays out. But uh, looking at the other dates, you know, we, there was a few other deaths recently, too. Wasn't there China, the famous wrestler of China? The one who took steroids and her clit grew into a, a cock? Yeah, that's why her porn career didn't go too well for her after uh, she quit wrestling. Quit wrestling and posed in Playboy and then went and did porn, and she did a, a film called One Night in China. And um, I remember a lot of people were excited to see the China porno. And then they saw it, and they wished they hadn't. <laughs> I haven't seen it, but the, the, the story is, is that she has a, uh, I, I take people, I, I've heard from trusted sources, believe me, they've seen it. Some sure some of you Filth mongers out there have seen it. Um, 
But yeah, supposedly her porn, porn career didn't go too well because, you know, when guys are stroking their shit, they're not too into seeing... Well, I guess some people could be, but for the most part, most guys are not into seeing a girl who has a clit that's grown into the size of a dong from juicing herself with steroids. That's just not attractive. <laughs> That'll send your boner right down into the ground right there. Oh, man. But yeah, her and... I think it was somebody else famous, but I, I mean, there. this is the window, again, Boston Marathon Bombies were April 15th, Oklahoma City was April 19th, Columbine was 420, they've got Earth Day thrown in there, this is, you know, it's all about certain dates, astrological alignments, certain times of the year that are more conducive towards this, this is why you see things happen around equinoxes, solstices. Full moons, lunar events. When we had a lunar event this week as well, the, but with the pink moon or something. And another thing, did you notice? You guys, you guys don't notice how quickly everywhere around the world had those purple lights on all these buildings that, that nobody's ever seen purple lights on before? Number one, you'd have to do that really quick. And that, number two, that'd be a lot of money. And it was all over the world, even here in Dallas, buildings they turned purple and whatnot. I saw that and I was like, yeah, it's a little quick. And it was just on like you know, a few hours of his death being announced. All of a sudden, they were able to get lights on the Eiffel Tower and all these, you know, iconic buildings around the world just that quick. I don't know. It just doesn't seem, doesn't seem likely. Does not seem likely at all. But yeah, I was blown away by the David Bowie thing. Like, well, there's another, you know, there's another clue. One of the last songs he ever performed ever in his life was, I mean, that's a, that's a, it's a huge clue. Unmarried with no children, so will Jehovah's Witnesses church or Prince family inherit his three million hundred million dollar fortune, sprawling Minnesota mansion, and enough unreleased material to last a century? Yeah, he there's all kinds of stories, legendary stories about his vault and famous musicians that he did recording sessions with. And um, you know, there's a lot of similarities between Bowie and and Prince. I mean, both were uh, you know known for their flamboyant um, androgynous characters and uh they were both stylistically musically they were both genre jumpers i mean they would jump both were all over the map you know going from rock and pop and dance and funk and disco and latin music and jumping in between all the genres so i i i find that very very fascinating very interesting that uh after bowie we would have a very similar character with Prince here, and uh, you know, I'm I'm not going to sit here and say I was the biggest Prince fan on the on on the face of the planet, but I will say this: um, he was, I think, probably one of the most underrated guitar players ever. I mean, uh, he, he was just an unbelievable guitar player. I, I I do have one Prince related story, though. I'll tell you, I. Uh, Actually, back in the late 1990s, this is hilarious. I uh, I'd forgotten about this till I heard the news of a death. Death that uh, well, I accidentally, inadvertently saw Prince live in concert one time. He, uh, I didn't know it because I, I would never go to his show or go to his concert. I was too busy seeing other concerts and stuff back then. You know, rock bands and stuff, but. Um, I used to go to this dance club in Dallas on like Friday nights and Saturday nights sometimes with friends and, you know, co-workers and whatnot. I had friends that would dance. I usually would just go and, you know, get fucked up and drink and, you know, talk to chicks, whatever. And uh, this one night, they we, there was people like setting stuff up in the corner of the room and nobody was really paying attention. And... um they stop the music and turn out all the lights and then turn them all back on real quick. And there's, I mean, the band starts and people were like, what? Cause this was like, you know, a dance club. People were like, why is there a band playing? And I was sitting there kind of like, what, you know, this is weird. They waited till it was almost like 2 AM when they stopped selling alcohol when they started playing. And, uh, and then the person starts singing and everybody was like, it was like, you know, a dog whistle. People were like, what? 
it was Prince. I, I didn't know it. Prince used to do this thing where he would, uh, sometimes when he was on tour, he would go play a show. He played at like Reunion Arena or like whatever the, you know, the stadium arena was back then here in Dallas and uh, play this like two or three hour show and then got like a small stage set up, like a small drum kit and like, you know, just a few amps and PA or what have you. And uh, he would just go to a random club in whatever city he was playing in and just set up and do an impromptu show. And that's what happened. I just, I just happened to be, you know, at this club with some friends and, and Lone Hill Prince just shows up, sets up, fucking unleashes the gear in place for like two hours. And, uh, you know, I, I really, other than like, you know, the Purple Rain stuff and the movie, I, you know, Diamonds and Pearls, I think I remember hearing that song. I didn't really get into his music that much, but it made me realize when I saw him that, oh, holy shit, what a fucking incredible guitar player that he was. It, that was something I, you know, I never really got or saw in the songs I heard from. They weren't necessarily, uh, you know, what you would call guitar-heavy songs that Prince would do for the most part, but uh, yeah, that's when I was like, it was it was crazy. It was just one of those crazy, weird right place at the right time, crazy situations that that, uh, <laughs> that happened. I'll never forget that. It was gonna be, I mean, playing three hours at a huge sold out show wasn't enough for Prince. He had to come play unannounced, you know, to uh, a bunch of people in a dance club. I mean, people just went, were going berserk. I mean, people were screaming like it was the fucking Beatles or something. I mean, people just dancing around their own business, turn around, and fucking all of a sudden, you know, bam, 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 bam. People were like, what the fuck? Is there a Prince cover band in here? What the fuck is this shit? And they started singing, and people were like, deer in the fucking headlights. Like, wait a minute. Surely not. I mean, people were, everybody, man, some people were like, what? Because nobody in a million years would have thought, you know, because back, back before, you know, social media or something, you couldn't do something like that now because it'd be so, it'd be over Twitter and Facebook, media would be there in two seconds, man. It's a lot harder to do something like that now, but, uh, yeah, even though I wasn't, you know, a huge fan of his music, uh, I, you know, he definitely, uh, was quite the prolific songwriter. See, you know, he did. Uh, <clears throat> he wrote that Sinead O'Connor song. Nothing compares to you. That was that was one of his writings. But anyway, I've got a lot of people saying, you know, what what's up with this Prince thing? Was it a ritual? Was it a, you know, was he murdered? Did he fake his death? Uh, but uh, like I said, the AIDS, you know, the AIDS possibility thing could be it. But like I said, there's five or six different. Speculative stories going around right now on it, and that's that's another key indicator that uh, there's something more to the story. When you see that many off the chart conflicting stories about something, and they always happen around these deaths, you had that with David Bowie as well, with him keeping his uh, for some strange reason keeping his location where he was when he died in his final days a, a secret from people. Later, it came out that he was in New York. But at the time, it, you know, it was a secret. Again, with you know, Prince collapsed. No one's around. This guy had security and bodyguards and handlers and stuff around him, twenty four seven. But in the two seconds when he's in the uh, the elevator, the two seconds probably ever he didn't have somebody around. That's when he collapsed and dies. Um, maybe so. But I think. Uh, what I think was is I think he he when he made the decision to get off those drugs two years ago that when he consulted with those elders I think that they consulted with him and he basically lined it up so that his death would take place during this window that relates to the spirit world being open. And when you trace back the Levites, you look in the Levite priesthood, do research into that, and, and, and look into the Russell bloodline, and Charles Taze Russell, and look at all that. It's fascinating. Because you'll see this connection back to the ancient priesthood, and these ancient high magicians that later became Freemasons, and you see how the tentacles weave into, of course, the music industry. And I find more and more that so many deaths, that musician deaths specifically, that we've been told have just taken, you know, at face value, being with or I mean, 
almost every, I, seriously, you're going to laugh. Almost every famous musician who's died in the past <clears throat> 50 years, 50, 60 years, uh, you know, can be connected to strange, high strangeness and weirdness. And there's more to the story than there appears to be. Uh, compared, you know, especially compared to the narrative that they, the official narrative and story they tell us on these events. So, just my examination, I, I think that uh, he made the conscious effort to not take these drugs and be artificially kept alive and as, as a, uh, you know, in accordance with the Jehovah's Witness faith. And that, uh, you know, offering that happens around these dates when they love death to happen. Uh, so there's, I, I'm, I think there'll be more in the coming days and weeks that we'll know and more information, more stuff that we'll find out and when there is, I'll update you all uh, further on that. But anyway, I, I got a bunch of emails I, and I don't have time to make a little video like I did. And there's just not as much to this, at least not yet, uh, from what I found, to, like there was with the Bowie thing. I got the Bowie thing out four days after he died. It's pretty fucking good. A lot of people have made Bowie videos and whatnot on YouTube subsequently since then, but a lot. Of, I've got a lot of comments and a lot of people say that, that mine was the best they've seen because, uh, and people leave comments, oh, well, it's this, this, and that. They leave, and, and like, well, my point in my films are not to come to any conclusions for you. You know, I present the evidence, um, and then you can come to whatever conclusions you want. doesn't mean I have to agree with those conclusions. So when people leave comments, they act, you know, well, he did this because of this, this, and this. I'm, well, okay, maybe that's your opinion, and maybe that's what you've gathered from the information, but getting mad at me because I didn't say that in my film is missing the point of my films because I don't make them to come to conclusions for you like everybody else and every other filmmaker and presenter does. They work backwards. They have their, th they, they have their point. They want you to believe, and they work backwards from that. That's not what I do. I'm not here to think for you or to get you to um, be on board with any personal agenda or anything I have. I simply do the research and present the information. And uh, <clears throat> anyway, for those of you who sent emails, there you go. I took some time to talk about that and hope it helps. I'll update you with more. As I know it. You know, I've been thinking about doing, because I keep track of so much of this um, happenings in the entertainment world. Some I've always, you know, I've always been, I'm a musician myself, and I've, I used to work in record stores and stuff. And so I, uh, you know, I, I had people, I know people that have been signed to record labels, and I've known famous musicians. And I've been thinking about maybe doing a show or doing, you know, another show that just deals with, music and, and stuff like that and stuff where I can get into different topics, you know, maybe reach a different different audience of what I reach with just this stuff. Spread it out a little, you know. I have a lot more knowledge than just ancient societies and bloodlines and conspiracy stuff and, you know, secret societies and occult. I, I have all that knowledge too, but I have also a wealth of knowledge in music and films and just tons of stuff, so... Maybe we'll do that at some point. My website is theglobalreality.com. Please go there and contribute to our April fundraiser. We have about a week or so left to go. We need to reach 100% of our goal. We will have a prize pack that we'll be announcing this week for that. The highest contributor will get. And it's going to be a fucking good one. So, uh... Definitely go to my website, make a contribution, get something from our download shop. We've got all kinds of great audiobooks in there. We've got the new Manly P. Hall three-pack audio special up there. We've got the Atlantis multi-pack. All kinds of uh, good audiobooks and all my films up there. Lost Secrets of Ancient America, Volume 1 and 2. The Secret Right, Volume 1 and 2. All kinds of packs in there, all my films. Please go and support our work. I am dil diligently working to have this film done in the next week or two. Um. But uh, we've got to have your support, and we've got to have uh, financial contributions for everybody out there while I'm taking the time to, to make what is going to be, I mean, this definitely is going to be my finest work yet. And right now I'm trying to raise an extra 60 bucks so I can get these 
effects plugins, video effects plugins that I'm going to use in the film that will give the film um, a much slicker and, and just a, a more updated, slicker looking, you know, a look, just the whole overall look of it. And um, so if anybody wants to contribute towards that at the donate button in my website, you can do that too as well. And I'll, you know, I'll give you credit in the film, put your name in the film for helping and all that. That's what we've done pretty much every, you know, we're, we're still going to do that until I say we're not doing it anymore until the film's totally done. You know, everybody that contributes a hundred dollars will get their name, in the special thanks of the film. So, and you'll get a free download once the film comes out. Um, two weeks maximum and it's going to be done. It may be done before then. Sit tight, be Please be patient. I appreciate everybody out there for your support and uh, patience while I do this work that is uh, very difficult to do when you're a one-man show, let me tell you. And uh, I just appreciate everybody out there and everybody's continued support. So uh, please visit my website and help us out. We'll talk to you again soon. Take care.